Hi, good morning. This is Meredith Lego, and I'm doing a series of videos on Ascension Science. Um, if you're new to the channel, I do highly recommend that you go to the beginning because some of the concepts really build upon themselves like chapters in a, a school book, if you will, or a textbook. Um, and I'll be referring to some items that I might have covered in previous uh, chapters, so to speak, or videos. Um, one of the things that I'm going to be getting in today builds upon uh, the last video that I did, which was on the concept of stages of ascension and specifically the sixth stage of ascension when you're starting to get into more um, teaching. Now, one of the things that was implied in that video, um, and that video was channeled from uh, being called Ascended Master Hilarion, as in much of the content that I've been sharing so, so far, um, essentially, uh, he, he, uh, I, I, I connect with him basically, uh, kind of post meditation or kind of during meditation, um, and ask him a series of questions that I'm interested in learning more about. And I kind of, uh, uh, automatic write the answers that, that are coming to me or that I, um, actually hear telepathically. So it's, it's happening through that technique. Um, so one of the things that, that he talks about in that last video is the fact that when you get to the sixth stage, you're essentially um, becoming more of a quote unquote ascended master teacher. And um, I think it was it was very important to point out that um, ascended master teacher should, you know, and I've always kind of looked at my relationship with Hilarion is not sort of as a, a kind of savior complex, more of like, well, here's a teacher who's offering a teaching Yet I work with, and I work with a lot of different teachers, frankly, and I also um, explore my own content that you know interests me and develop my own point of view on um, you know my own kind of personal view of life, so to speak. So I think that's the most important thing that I wanted to stress about the term ascended master. Um, but but I want to tie it to a, um, basically a download that I got last night. Um, and this comes from a, another set of beings that I um, am working with. I don't actually have a name for them. Um, <laughs> they have a completely different set of energy, and it's more of a collective consciousness. Um, I, I did have the opportunity to meet them, and I'll get into that at the end of the video because it's pretty interesting how it happened. Um, but it, it, you know, it kind of blew my world away when I was going through the experience. But um, I, I did want to share a message that, that I did receive um, because it's extremely important now. And I actually channeled this last night. So the question that I asked is, what is the best and highest good for humanity to know at this time? And that's actually a question that I tend to ask maybe kind of once a month because I'm just curious or kind of checking in on what the answer is going to be. So the answer that I got back is the gateway to truth excuse me, the gateways to true heaven lies within. Self-actualization and self-discipline are required to walk this path. You have to want it. The true source of all lies within the heart. Follow your heart, the God self, the Christos self, in each and every moment. So um, you're going to see that some of the teachings are pretty consistent from beings that are sort of following this particular path, as in follow your heart. Um, now they do reference the God self, um, follow your heart, the God self. So uh, given the fact that we're all one source field, we literally are all source. Um, so you are source, you are God, you have the God self within you. You don't need to rely upon anybody else to find your truth. Um, and they also reference the Christo self which really implies unity consciousness. So don't think about the kind of religious term or figure Christ. Think about the fact that the Christos self is within you for unity consciousness because you are one with all um, that is inside of a you know quantum field. Um, so they go on to say that use your inner discernment to lead your path. Have trust in yourself as your own expression of your own desire. Take the tough actions required to achieve the sovereignty you rightfully have. Ask no one to define the path for you. Sovereignty, 
excuse me, sovereignty of being is the most fundamental right of the universal cosmic law. Take back your power and your sovereignty, humanity. Do not allow others to control or manipulate your consent. Feel what is your right path, your truth. Stay strong and do not give into fear to protect and defend it. Wealth and third density material objects are meaningless if your sovereignty is hijacked. You have no idea about the stakes at hand. And then at the end of that um, channel, um, I heard six words come in very clearly, truth, justice, integrity, and love, compassion, and beauty. Um, and so <clears throat> there, there's a lot of um, very important messages that I think build upon uh, some of the teachings that I also got from Hilarion, as well as what I touched upon in the last video. Um, you know, obviously the most important thing is you have to have discernment for following what brings you the greatest passion and joys in each and every moment. Um, oftentimes your higher self speaks to you in the form of sort of impulses of your feelings, um, of kind of that inner voice about knowing what direction to go. And oftentimes it's in those moments that the ego personality complex will come in and start to second guess what you know to be the right direction. Um, I see it within myself all the time. I'm working on it. Um, and I see it a lot with others in my um, own kind of family as well. So that's the most important thing. You know, have no one define your path for you. That includes other authority figures that are external um, to what you feel and know to be the right thing, um, you know, for for yourself and for others. I think the one thing that they do reference here, and I have not gotten into this, is universal cosmic law. Um, so there are sort of principles. Um, some of them can be wrapped up with the concept of the hermetic laws. And if you don't or haven't researched that, I um, highly encourage you to, to look into them. But essentially, um, so there's some universal truths that, uh, that are wrapped up in cosmic law or law of one. Um, you know, so essentially it's kind of like I sum it down to one of the, one of the principles is being the golden rule, treat others the way that you want to be treated. <laughs> um, and you can't go wrong. So if you realize that essentially we're all one, um, you know, just treat others the way literally you want to be treated. <laughs> um, cause then essentially you'll start to have mirrored back to you, um, that vibrational frequency that you're giving off. And with that, I highly encourage you to go back to the first videos kind of in series 1.0 that covers the source field and then the concept of mirroring. Um, so one of the things that uh, I, I, you know, I wanted to say about this particular teaching is that, you know, you're your own truth, um, take accountability, self accountability for things that happen to you and self mastery, because if you sort of implicitly kind of go along with the flow, you're implicitly sort of handing over, um, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, and you know, you're, you're handing over your consent in those particular moments. So um, you, you, you need to mas be the master of your own direction, your own consent. So the other thing that's really important here, especially under the cosmic law one is that you are 100% equal to all other beings. And I think that's an important lesson that I certainly learned along the way as I was starting to wake up and starting to have experiences and working with other beings is that um, not to treat them as sort of um, saviors um, who know more than me. Yes, so they, uh, for example, like the last video I referenced the fact that a carpenter, <laughs> you know, a skilled carpenter might know more than me. And yes, I go to YouTube videos to figure out like how to do things around the house because this person clearly has mastered this subject. So yes, while I like to learn from people who have mastered a particular subject, the goal is for me to master it myself. Um, so again, you're hundred percent equal with other beings. You are one with them. So that requires and commands mutual respect. Um, so as I mentioned before, even though 
I am offering teachings that I've received from an ascended master or from these other beings. It doesn't mean that it's my only truth and nor should it be your own, your truth as well. So you need to obviously um, keep what resonates with you and discard the rest. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to say is that um, not only is this important in our third dimensional reality that we're living in within the holographic construct, but it's also important to keep this in mind and become more lucid within dream time. Um, because there are beings out there that will try and sort of manipulate or control your consent. And fortunately, fortunately, I'm starting to wake up more and more to that reality. Um, and I, I realize it when it's happening in dream time. I realize it and it, it immediately turns me into a lucid experience where I'll have beings basically ask me to sort of make a contract or sort of give up some sort of power over to them. And essentially, you have to um, basically say no. So in those moments, I become very lucid, aware of what's going on, and basically say, no, you have no power over me. You know, I'm a sovereign being. So you have to be accountable to your own truth, your own growth, and your own destiny. And with that, you are never a victim to anything that happens to you. So even if you feel like you didn't create the circumstance, in some ways, if you don't do anything about it, you're sort of um, uh, going along with the flow and consenting in that process. And therefore, you're going to manifest that timeline. Um, so one of the things that, that was mentioned um, in that teaching was the last sentence um, or the last two sentences, so let me reread that. Wealth and third density material objects are meaningless if your sovereignty is hijacked. You have no idea about the stakes at hand. And I think that was a general message sort of for humanity. But this is where I want to share uh, an experience that I had in meeting um, some of these beings. So it happened on August the 26th, 2018, and I was meditating in the morning. Um, and all of a sudden I was pulled up, my uh, I, you know, consciousness really was pulled up out of my body and I sort of bilocated or split consciousness. And that um, was happening quite a bit then. Um, so I was very aware of the fact that I was in my body. My husband was uh, making coffee in the other room. The birds were chirping outside, and I was very aware of that plane of consciousness. But at the same time, another piece or fractal of my consciousness was being pulled up into a portal. It was um, it was kind of like a very, very long wormhole tunnel. I, you know, I felt like I was going through a wormhole that you might see on TV. And at the other end of it, um, I came into contact with a collective consciousness of um, about nine beings or so, and six of them actually communicated. So it was a collective consciousness and the fact that um, they all spoke like one thought process. In other words, let's say, you know, I'm speaking, uh, you know, a paragraph of different concepts you know, you'd have one being starting the sentence, another being finishing the sentence, and another being, you know, kicking off with the next sentence. So they, they all were communicating the same concept. And as I was kind of um, aware of the fact that they are all communicating um, the same concept, <laughs> I could hear their individual unique voices. Um, so of the six beings that were communicating, there were four males and two females, and they had very exotic accents is the only way that I can describe it. Um, but they were speaking to me in a language, obviously, that I could understand. Um, they told me that they wanted to work with me. And um, one of the things that they mentioned is that, that we're in the midst of a massive spiritual war going behind, uh, kind of in other kind of densities and dimensions for consciousness. And that the spiritual war is between light and dark energies or extreme polarized energies. And that I we need to be very, very discerning um, in the years ahead. Um, they, they said that it, it's going to be very, very important, you know, so, the, you know, obviously I'm sharing this message, um, and it's really a message for everybody to be very, very discerning and to feel the energy as opposed to always 
use visuals. Now, this is really, really important. Um, as a side note, one of the things that I've done in my exploration of um, sort of my life and my multiple incarnations is um, uh, learn about the fact that coming into this particular incarnation, I shut down my third eye. So that means that it's very rare that I get a lot of downloads or visuals that I see. It's more that I'm hearing clear audiently and that I'm feeling actually the first sort of um, psychic sensitivity that came on for me was um, clairsentience, which means you feel energy in a big way. Um, and I, I shut down the third eye because um, I needed to learn how to feel energy and know what resonates with me versus what doesn't. Um, and the reason that was done is that you, you have to be mindful that you can be tricked with visuals. Um, and so in the third density reality that we're in, um, you know, there's a whole concept of fake news or AI virtual programming in 3D. Um, the fact, I mean, the fact that you could be shown something that really isn't being done because it was a programmed AI image. Um, so that's the idea of just be mindful of what you're seeing because the reality is it may not be true and it could be done in uh, with not the best in intentions um, around what's best and highest good for humanity. Um, so the other thing is that obviously I've been going through tests in other dimensions, call it other kind of or densities, especially in the astral, is uh, again, learning how to feel out the energies um, as opposed to necessarily um, seeing energies because sometimes um, energies in other uh, dimensions can sort of also trick you as well through visual cues. Um, it hasn't happened to me because obviously um, I have to work really hard to see with the third eye and mostly I see more in the astral plane, but there are definitely beings that can come in and kind of look like a certain being but aren't really that, so they're kind of tricking you. So you just have to be very careful of that. So my lesson in this life is to learn how to feel um, the energies and sort of discern through that. Um, so what that means and what they were saying is that basically don't automatically trust anyone who connects with you because there are forces that are going on at work right now. <laughs> um, and in that moment when I was hearing them say this, you know, they, they ended up talking a lot of other spiritual concepts as well, but um, being the fact that it was coming in so fast and I was so fascinated, I couldn't remember all of them, but that was the one piece that I did remember. Um, I tested their statement in that moment by saying, okay, then disconnect from me now. And um, the connection ended like immediately. I didn't sense any harm or malicious intent. So I was really trying to feel into their energy. But um, what's interesting is that, you know, they basically were trying to say, you just have to be very discerning in the years ahead. And um, boy, with everything that's played out in the world, they couldn't be right enough. But I think what's important is that not only do we need to be discerning with what's going on in this kind of conscious dimensional reality that we exist in, but also in other dimensions. So um, I'm on a mission to become even more lucid, you know, when I'm dreaming um, so that I can get more command and control over my sovereignty in all dimensional states. So um, that's important. So uh, that's just one thing that I um, think is interesting and, you know, as opposed to sort of share this particular teaching later on, because I have so much catch up work to do on other things that I've, um, you know, w would like to pass on to you. Um, this was important because of all the stuff that's going on in our world today. Um, to really listen to your feelings, listen to what resonates for you. And it if it feels off, basically what they're saying is that you're going to have to have the strength and take the tough action required to achieve the sovereignty you rightfully have. Um, I think a lot of people have done that over the last year and some have been ostracized, some have lost jobs, <laughs> um, but you're going to have to follow what path feels right for you. Nobody can dictate that for you. Um, so with that, I, I hope that You've taken away something that can benefit from you. And obviously, 
you know, take what resonates with you and um, leave the rest behind. That's probably the most important teaching of all of this. And with that, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.